Caleb Farley made national headlines this summer as he became the first major college football player to opt out of the 2020 season. Many players followed in his footsteps as hundreds of players opted out of the season. Although he missed the season, Farley is widely regarded as one of the best cornerbacks in this draft class. So who exactly is Caleb Farley? Why did he decide to opt out of the season? And what does his NFL future look like? Before we get to today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. I post a lot of college football content, so if you enjoy videos like this, then this is definitely the place for you. From from a young age, everyone could just tell that Caleb was different. He had a motor from day one. You put him to bed and he wakes up wound up, his father said. You had to keep your eyes on him. I remember telling some of my friends, this kid, I hope we can channel him in the right direction because he has to be known. He was determined. He's been determined for a long time. Caleb was about five years old when he started tagging along with his brother Joshua and his friends for pickup football games. He was six when he first told his father that he wanted to be a professional football player. He asked his dad if he thought he could do it. His father told him that there's no doubt in his mind, you just have to want it bad enough. Well, that message stuck, and for 13 years, Caleb did everything he could to pursue his dream. In the early days at Maiden High School, he was still very undersized. And no, he wasn't playing cornerback. He was actually the quarterback for his team. Throughout his high school career, Farley threw for more than 4,500 yards with 50 passing touchdowns. His damage, though, came on the ground as he rushed for more than 5,500 yards in 38 games. That comes out to an average of just under 150 rushing yards per game and over 10 yards per carry. He finished his high school career with a whopping 71 rushing touchdowns. And yeah, I just thought I'd remind you, he did this while playing quarterback. One day, Frank Beamer showed up at Caleb's practice. That was the first look I got from any school, D3, D2, but I talked to him. He was just letting me know he recognized me. In that small town, I don't know how exactly he found me. For Caleb, his destination was always the same place, Virginia Tech. For him, it felt like home, and that means everything to him. Caleb's mother, Robin, was diagnosed with breast cancer when he was still in middle school. She spent nearly two years in treatment. Caleb said it never occurred to him that she might die from it. To me, it was never a big deal. In the household, it was always something that was going to get solved. I was a kid, but I thought I knew that she was going to get healed and there'd be a fairy tale ending. And I'm glad it was like that because there was always some happiness in the household. That was exactly how his mother wanted things to be. There were bad days for her, but she made sure that she remained strong for Caleb and made everything feel like it was alright. She attended every one of his football games. Even when the cancer returned, this time in her bones, she took Caleb on recruiting trips, cooked dinners, and lived her life as if nothing was wrong. Caleb Farley enrolled at Virginia Tech in January of 2017. He'd hoped to play quarterback, but it seemed like an unlikely fit long term due to a smaller build. But Foster really wanted to test Caleb out on defense, mainly cornerback. However, Caleb thought if he couldn't play quarterback, he'd be a much better fit at wide receiver. So they listened to him and tried him out there. In the Hokie Spring game that year, he put on an absolute show for the fans, hauling in 90 receiving yards and drawing three pass interference flags. By the time fall camp opened, the buzz for Farley was starting to grow, and on the first day of practice, it all ended with a pop in his knee. For Caleb, this was the first time he had ever dealt with an injury of this magnitude. He had never had to face a year without football in his life. But back home, his mom was sick, and suddenly, he had a bunch of free time that he could spend with her. I don't know that we look at the injury as unfortunate anymore, his dad said. He was here in her final days, and I think that's something he'll always be thankful for. And I don't think he'd give that up. When Caleb was at school, he'd FaceTime with his mom as much as he possibly could. When he was at home, they never talked about cancer. They talked about football and how he was doing at his new position. Robin's condition was getting worse as each day went by. But on Caleb's birthday, just two months before she passed away, she cooked a celebratory meal for the entire family. How could she be more happy than me, and she was the one going through it? That's what kept me going. I just remember getting weirdly at peace. I was calm. When I woke up and the sun was out, I'd find joy in that. For Virginia Tech's bowl game in Orlando, Farley skipped the trip. He was four months into rehabbing his knee, and his mom was really struggling. She wanted Farley to go to the game, but he wanted to be home with her. A few days before she died, Robin talked with her boys. She'd fought long enough, but she told them that she was ready. Caleb thought he was ready too. They'd been bracing for this for a while, but the reality still rattled him. He wasn't ready to accept it, and he still questioned everything that was going on. I still don't know why God would let her suffer. My father tells me not to question it. It's more, I'm gonna have to humble myself and accept it. By the spring, Farley's knee was improving, and it looked as if he'd be ready to go for the season. Head coach Justin Fuente had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Caleb and talked to him about changing positions. The Hokies recruited him as an athlete with promises of using him as a weapon on offense, 
but the coaching staff changed their minds less than a month into the team's winter conditioning program. There wasn't anything nearly as formal a year later once he finished rehabbing his ACL injury, and Farley found himself back in the position meeting group with defensive backs coach Brian Mitchell. I knew as soon as I blew up my knee, I was going back to cornerback. I was going to play offense that season because we were short at receiver. I knew once those guys left and I blew my knee out, I was going back to defense. It was just kind of known. Still, when Caleb finally took the field against Florida State on September 3rd, after a year of rehab and change and loss, there was something special going on in that field that night. He wanted to take the opening kickoff back for a touchdown, but sadly, that didn't happen. But there was something special in the air, some different kind of energy, like someone was looking after him. We knew that he was going to have a good game, his brother Joshua said. Don't ask me how, we just had a feeling. And then it was for sure. He had two interceptions, a sack, and a win. And that was no coincidence. We get to do these things, and occasionally there are special moments. Not wins or losses, just special moments that will stay with you for a long, long time. That's one of them for me. Farley went on to finish his freshman season with 36 tackles, 7 pass deflections, and 2 interceptions. Now those are some pretty good numbers from a cornerback in the ACC, especially a freshman, playing a position for the first time in his life. However, Caleb said that he was scared of the ball coming his way. I was scared. I was timid. I didn't want a place to come to my side. I didn't want to mess up and hurt the team. I didn't have any confidence in myself on the defensive side of the ball. I didn't know what I was doing. Caleb Farley maintained that level of focus and determination in the months leading up to the 2019 season. He said that he was angry and pissed off at how the previous year had gone. Entering the new season, he was ready to put it all together. Farley credits the 700 plus snaps he played as a redshirt freshman and the coaching he received from Brian Mitchell for helping him play at an elite level. His improved practice habits also played a major role in his success. He was named first team all ACC with four interceptions and a league leading 16 passes defended in 2019. According to Pro Football Focus, Farley only allowed 18 catches on 50 targets and opposing quarterbacks only had a passer rating of 26.8 when throwing in his direction. That ranked fifth best among corners in the FBS. Here's what Pro Football Focus wrote about him following his impressive sophomore campaign. He was targeted 50 times this season. Farley locked down receivers in his coverage better than almost anyone else in the entire country. In fact, of all cornerbacks who saw at least 25 passes thrown their way, Farley finished second with a passer rating of 29.2 when targeted. As an example of how impressive that is, a quarterback receives a 39.6 for simply spiking the ball every play, and therefore, signal callers were statistically better off throwing the ball away than by testing Farley's coverage this season. He allowed just 19 receptions for 265 yards and one touchdown against four interceptions and another nine pass breakups. He was one of the stingiest cornerbacks in the country when it came to limiting plays, and he did it across the field. He lined up in press coverage on 99 snaps and was impressive in both man and zone coverage during his incredible 2019 season. Entering 2020, Farley was projected to not only be one of the top cornerbacks in the ACC, but one of the top cornerbacks in the entire country. There was a lot of hype surrounding him, and many people believed he had the chance to be a first-round pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. But then, the COVID-19 pandemic changed everything. Thing. With uncertainty surrounding the season and his experience with his mother, Farley made the decision to opt out of the college football season and begin his preparation for the NFL Draft, becoming the first big-time college football athlete to do so. Caleb said this in a written statement that he released. This year at Virginia Tech, at our workouts, I started having deep concerns about staying healthy. Guys were going home, going to Myrtle Beach, coming back to campus, and we weren't getting tested. We're all together, working out, close to each other, and you have no real idea who might have it, if anybody might have it. One day I looked around and we were like 100 deep in our indoor facility with no masks. My concern grew more and more. I started being really conflicted about playing. What this came down to is I lost one parent. My dad is so important to me. Growing old with him means so much to me, more than football. I don't know what I would do if I contracted it and gave it to him and he passed away. I couldn't live with that. Part of me just thought I put all my eggs into this basket since I was six years old. Just suck it up and play. Try to stay safe. But I couldn't ignore all the doubts in my head. People say I could have waited till the NCAA canceled the season and then just not play. Or play a few games and then announce I was opting out. But I couldn't do that. I knew what I had to do. So last Monday night, I went to Coach Fuente's office. I was so nervous. I just took a deep breath and told him my decision. He tried to talk me out of it, but I was firm. What I will always respect about Coach Fuente is he said he loved me and will always be a Caleb Farley fan. That meant the world to me. So now, I'll spend time training for pro football. I'll get ready for the scouting combine. What will the NFL think of my decision? I don't know. I haven't heard from anyone in the league. It's kind of scary to think about. If the NFL looks at this and doesn't like it, I will just have to prove to them how dedicated to football I am. 
I will look NFL scouts and GMs in the eye and tell them my story. I don't know if it'll hurt me, but I do know when I get to the league, I have the ability to play ball with anyone on this earth. Caleb wasn't the only player to opt out, as many players across the sport followed in his footsteps and decided to not risk their careers by playing. Los Angeles Chargers defensive back Casey Hayward, who was a mentor of Farley's, didn't think that it would be a problem. Hayward, who lost his mother to cancer in 2016, reached out to Farley after hearing they shared a similar story during the broadcast of the 2018 Florida State football game. A friendship grew from their brief initial interaction. If he goes to the combine and runs a 4-2, nobody's going to remember he didn't play in the fall. Farley spent time training with Hayward back in May. Those training sessions have the former second round pick out of Vanderbilt convinced that Caleb is going to be a top prospect in the 2021 NFL draft. He is blazing fast. We lined up for a race and he smoked me. I'm good at the 20 yard dash and I really don't lose to people, but he's fast fast. It was only 20 yards, but it wasn't even close. Hayward spoke with Caleb the day before he announced his decision and could sense he was at peace with his mind. For college players, the risk is bigger. We get paid pretty well to do it. I think he did what he needed to do. For Caleb, the dream is to play in the NFL, and if he's lucky enough to make it, he hopes he can move his family with him wherever he lands. It looks as if the decision won't hurt him, as he's in most first round projections, even going in the top 10 in a lot of NFL mock drafts. Though he didn't play, there are many people out there who consider him to be the top cornerback in this draft class. But when it's all over, he's still gonna have his hometown waiting for him, and that's all he's ever really needed. To tell you the truth, I just want to go back home and coach at my high school and live with my pops, Farley said about his plans after football. This past summer, that's mostly what he did. On weekends, when the team was off from practice, he'd hop in his car, drive three hours south, and reconnect with his roots. He'd see his dad, he'd visit friends, he'd stop by to see his grandparents, who lived just a few miles away. He'd go to his old high school, lift some weights, coach up the current crop of players at Maiden High School. It sounds like he was enjoying his his time just fine. So where do you guys think Caleb Farley is going to fall in the draft? Do you think not playing this year helped or hurt his draft stock? Drop a comment down below. I will add this. I made a highlight video for him last year and he's one of the nicest guys I've had a pleasure of doing business with. He's a genuine dude and I really hope he's able to find success in the NFL. If there's another draft prospect you'd like to see a video on, share with me in the comments below. If you could please take a second and give this video a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it as it really helps share the video with more college football fans. If you haven't done so yet, don't forget to subscribe and turn on those notifications. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, then this is definitely the place for you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.